Hey guys, it's Madam Wario. Welcome to my Mario Party Top 100 Comparative Series, where today I'm going to talk about the minigames chosen from Mario Party 1 to be put in Mario Party The Top 100. So let's get started with my favorite minigame, not only in this game, but in the entire Mario Party series, Facelift. This is my favorite minigame of all time, so undoubtedly my expectation for the technically second remake of the game was incredibly high. Because I'm a sucker for nostalgia, I can't help but be pleased that Mario Party The Top 100 chose to remaster this game as Bowser's facelift from Mario Party 1, rather than the version featuring all six playable characters from Mario Party 2. That being said, however, the ultimate version of this game would feature all characters, including Bowser. But then it wouldn't quite qualify as an exact remake, would it? Needless to say, I'm also happy that Nintendo did not change the music for this game as they did with several others. The thinking tone of Can It Be Done just thrives with this minigame. I do think it was clever to incorporate the stylus and touchscreen controls into this minigame as well, rather than having to use the good ol' hold down A and drag method. However, the 3DS touchscreen only shows a silhouette of Bowser's face. While I get that part of the game's challenge has always been having to re-detail Bowser's face on a relatively small screen, considering it has always been split into four, it's not like the 3DS screen is that big to begin with, even on an XL. I would have liked to have a more detailed view of Bowser's face in the Top 100 version, especially given the fact that the game is harder and not as forgiving as the original when it comes to its results. The only other detail I wish had not been left out is the fact that the original facelift mainly pays tribute to the title screen of Super Mario 64, even featuring a background that reads Super Bowser 64 in the game. Instead, we get something basic and updated, as Super Mario 64 grows less and less relevant in this era. Regardless, it would have been nice to have that little throwback included in the remake. So I know you're wondering, which is better? The original or Top 100? Did I mention I'm a slave to nostalgia? The original will always have my heart, and therefore I still prefer it to the remake, although maybe not for any good reason. Shy Guy says, aha, now here's a classic. This was maybe the second minigame I ever played in Mario Party 1. Instead of using your thumb's reflexes or holding an N64 controller in an awkward one thumb on each button sort of position, like I do, the controls have been switched to the L and R buttons. This is probably something the game should have done to begin with, so I'm glad they corrected this and made things more comfortable in Mario Party The Top 100. The graphics are downright stunning as well, however I wish Shy Guy were as pimped out in the Top 100 version as he is in the original. There's one thing about the Top 100 version of this minigame that cannot be ignored. It is so much more challenging. Nintendo did it right. This is not just a test of your reflexes anymore. It's a major test of your patience and nerves. Shy Guy has always done the fake out, even in the original, but now he really makes you think. It's so difficult not to press that button the second you see its flag. Shy Guy also plays the waiting game and will go longer periods of time without doing anything in the Top 100 version. This really keeps you on edge and allows the game to be challenging and vastly different every single time. I love a minigame that has a good challenge element to it, whereas in Mario Party 2's version, you were able to kind of keep tabs on Lakitu for an indication of how much time you had to decide on your flag, a feature that wasn't in Mario Party 1. This game doesn't need that and has perfected what was once a frustration more than anything. That's why, in my opinion, Mario Party The Top 100 features the best version of this game. Bombs away! So if you're anything like me, you're wondering this. Um, why not the Mario Party 2 version? Were they not wanting to have too many Mario Party 2 minigames in Top 100? They had no problem featuring other Mario Party 1 to Mario Party 2 remakes in the Top 100, so why not this one? I wish I had some sort of answer, but I just don't. To be honest, I don't feel like the Top 100 remake of Bombs Away is any more exciting than the original either. Sure, there are a few more elements, like you can get stunned by bombs rather than just by players jumping on your head, although that can still happen too, but there just isn't a wild amount of activity happening in this minigame, even in Top 100. I feel like the island doesn't move very much even when the cannonballs land close to it in the water. 
And although the graphics are amazing, the gameplay is still kind of bland and boring. Now I know this is considered to be a classic game, but honestly, Nintendo has already remade this minigame once and made it better. Mario Party 2's add-in of the atomic Bowser bomb at the end of the minigame is the ultimate ending if you even survive up to that point. So why revert back to a version that doesn't feature that? Sometimes the AI doesn't even fire anything at you for long periods of time in the original version and in the top 100 version. There were also two types of bombs in the Mario Party 2 version, cannonballs and torpedoes. This also added to the challenge and made the game more fun and exciting. So which is better, Mario Party 1 or Top 100? The answer is they're about the same. Mario Party 2 still features the best version of Bombs Away, and I'm sad that it got overlooked for the original version. Piranha's Pursuit Mario Party The Top 100 features the 100 best minigames in the Mario Party series, and when I think of a good minigame, I think of... Piranha's Pursuit? Seriously? Why is this game even on here? My only guess is that Nintendo was really disappointed with the original product and wanted to give themselves the chance to correct their programming mistakes made with this minigame originally. For example, in the original version, it's almost impossible to win if you're on the team of three, unless the one player actually makes a mistake. However, if they don't mess up, ground pounding the piranha does absolutely nothing. He grows, but does that really do anything? Unless the one player is the worst button masher in the world or does not anticipate the obstacles properly, there's nothing else standing in their way of winning this minigame. I've even seen computer players mess up and still win this minigame. It just isn't fair. In the top 100, the generic piranha is now Petey Piranha, which I thought was a cute touch. In addition, the vines, which you could swing on in the original version, although it was almost completely unnecessary, are more predominantly in your jumping path so you can use them. And I do think the team of three has more power in this version since I actually have lost to them as the one player without making any mistakes or having messed up. This does bring me to my personal biggest disappointment with this minigame. What happened to that awesome Super Mario Bros. 3 remix of World 8? I have no idea why Nintendo did not include all of the original music from past Mario parties in Top 100. Seriously, it's like they said, well, we gave the game 97%, that's good enough. Maybe fans won't notice that we just didn't include all the music. Nothing kills your nostalgia vibes like when something is inaccurate or missing. Come on, Nintendo, why did you think we wouldn't notice you snuck some Mario Party 3 music in there? Regardless of the failed music choice, I do believe the Top 100 corrected the strange number of flaws in the Mario Party 1 version of Piranha's Pursuit, making it a little better than the original. However, this still does not take away from the fact that this just wasn't a good minigame to begin with. Tug of War! Yes! The mechanic is back! The rotate the control stick mechanic changed the world! It produced gloves, injuries, and lawsuits, but I'm so happy that Nintendo included one of these style games in Top 100. Honestly, the control stick on the 3DS is way more harmless than that of the N64 controller. It's a lot softer, and it's impossible to rub all over your palm. It's actually really comfortable to play this minigame now, which makes me much happier. The controls are a little more forgiving too. You no longer feel like you're killing your controller or rather your 3DS. I think, again, Nintendo wanted to correct some programming errors they made in the past, which is probably a big reason why this minigame was included in the top 100. I have to admit, I absolutely love the redesign of the Bowser suit. It's so adorable. I do, however, miss the epic Bowser laugh that once came at the end of this minigame. Instead, the game just cuts off, but I think that's mainly due to the fact that there is now a results screen after every single minigame you play in Top 100. If you're looking for pain, Mario Party 1 has the best version of Tug of War, but if you're looking for fair play using the same controls as the original, then Mario Party The Top 100 has the better version. Desert Dash. Okay, Nintendo, I don't get it. You had the opportunity to add Bobsled Run or Bombskip Ball, and you chose Desert Dash? Really? 
While I don't have any particular beefs with this game, I definitely wouldn't call it the best out of all the 2 vs 2 minigames featured in Mario Party 1. There were only 5 2 vs 2 games in Mario Party 1 to begin with. They included the Mario Party 2 version of Hand Car Havoc in Top 100, thank god. Probably nicks Deep Sea Divers because of the rotate control stick mechanic, although they used it in Tug of War. And that left them with three choices, Bomb Skip Ball, Bob Sled Run, or Desert Dash, which was already remade into Dungeon Dash in Mario Party 2. So why did they choose the worst out of the three, and the one which already appears in another game in the series? It's not like there was anything wrong with the first version of the game that Mario Party 2 fixed, but seriously? Did we need to see it for a third time? I would have been much happier with one of the other choices with the exception of Deep Sea Divers since I'm not a huge fan of that game to begin with. Desert Dash is just too easy. You're working with what is most likely a computer player to shift your control stick right and left. Riveting. Not to mention, the characters make noise every time they move. This game just sounds like one huge orgy now. It's too much. While the game is not the worst choice, it's definitely not the best. Because of the lack of vocal control over the top 100 characters, I'm going to have to go with Mario Party 1 on this one when it comes to which version is better. So what do you pimps think? I know that if you've been following my channel for a very long time, or since the beginning rather, you know I am a Mario Party fanatic and you've seen all of my Mario Party projects, or at least the first one I would imagine. I want to know your thoughts, do you agree, do you disagree? I'm pretty sure by what I've already seen in comments on other videos that you guys are kind of on the same page as I am, but I am curious to hear your feedback so feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what you think of Mario Party the Top 100's Mario Party 1 minigames. And for those of you who would like to see me play Mario Party 2 live, I'm playing it live every Friday beginning April 6, 2018, so please check that out on my Twitch channel. All my streams are then uploaded to my YouTube channel after the fact if you can't make it or you'd like to watch it again later. So just know that my Mario Party 2 Friday night runs are going to start April 6th, so I hope you guys are enjoying this series, and I'd love to know your thoughts. This has been Madame Wario. Thanks so much for listening and for watching, and peace out, pimps!